सभूतवमूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे ठाकुर जी महाराज नीजे सदगुरु देव की जय Supreme Almighty, Sadguru Shri Muktanan Swami Sevit, Walla Walla Thakurji Maharaj, our Divine Guru Parampara Muktanan Swami, all the way to our Dada Guruji, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji. All of you, Santos and Bhaktos, Jai Swaminarayan. As we continue in our journey for Yuasaba, we have passed many, many different themes regarding each week. But week eight's theme is different. Week eight, eight's theme is a little difficult to digest. Week 8's theme will open our eyes in many ways. And that is what satsang is for. Satsang is for opening our eyes, helping oneself realize one's flaws and finding oneself. There is no better way to do this than to look inside oneself. This week's theme is called Swadosh Darshan. What does that mean? Swadosh meaning one's faults and Darshan is to see. To see one's own faults is one of the most, you can say, mentioned points in the Vachnamrut that Triji Maharaj has told us. Why? Because when one sees one's faults and when one sees others' positive qualities, then one is able to excel and attain spiritual greatness. But without this one key element, it is not possible. When someone points like this, only one finger is towards them, but the other three are towards oneself. It's very easy to point, but it's very difficult to see inside. But Sriji Maharaj is a practical Bhagwan. Sriji Maharaj knows the whole situation of each individual and that's how he has put many many points in the Vachnamrut that one can practically live and understand and live a life a live a spiritual life where one will be able to progress easily if one follows his words so this is Yuasaba week 8 Swadosh Darshan let's dive into it so here's the lineup for today. First, we're going to go and read a couple of Vach numbers. Gadara first chapter 67, Loya first, Gadara middle 44, Gadara middle 66. Then we're going to go into Sadguru Shri Gunatitam and Somnivato, Prakrantam 3, Vat number 61. Then Panampuji Guruji's Vato, Kalyan Kaniga, Prakrant 5, Vat 306. And then there's two Charitras. It's a little heavy course, but 
We are going to cover the gist of it, the most important parts that are needed. Nonetheless, this course is more entitled where one has to read and understand the concepts. So the PDF that is provided in uh, the Google Drive links in our Loyadam Parivar, that is the best way to access uh, the information and to read and understand it thoroughly. But we would like to look into the Vachnamrutsa Bhagwan Swami Narayan has mentioned this very point of Swa Dosh Darshan and go from there. So our first Vachnamrut is Gadara, first chapter 67. Now there's a small paragraph that is put there. Uh, it's just to kind of uh, summarize, but I would like to read to you exactly points. Swami Narayan Hare. Maharaj says in the Vachnam Rudgadara, first chapter 67, this Purush is extremely great. Purush meaning Ekantik Sat Purush. Ekantik Sat Purush, or if there is a word in the Vachnam Purush, or Ekantik Sant, or Sadhu, or Sat Purush, any of these words, when they come into the Vachnam when you read them, our minds vrutti should directly go to our Puja Guruji. Any of these words, Mota Sadhu, Great Saint, Ekantik Sat Purush, Sat Purush, Purush, any of these words that regard the saint are all for our Ekantik Sat Purush that we have received. The only way one can progress is to understand the Mahima and glory of the Pragat or manifest form of Bhagwan and the sadhu that we have received. If one keeps thinking about the past, that is good to remember charitras of Bhagwan and good to remember charitras of the Anand Santo and Hari Bhaktos. From there we can learn from their life, but to attain more strength is to understand and read and listen to and talk about the charitras of Pragat Maharaj, Pragat Satpurush, Pragat Santo and Pragat Bhakto of Loyadam Parivar. And for this very statement, this Purush is extremely great. That directly is the Vat that Bhagwan is talking about, the Ekantik Sat Purush. And for us, it's our Puja Guruji. He is extremely great. Okay, moving on. Despite thousands of people standing before him with folded hands, he does not have the slightest desire for the pleasures of the world. Despite thousands of people standing before him with folded hands, he does not have the slightest desire for the pleasures of the world. Now, you probably are thinking that, where is this practically seen? Well. Practicality is practicality, and as for myself, I have to give it to you straight. And one thing about that is that, one thing about that is that practically, right now, what is Puja Guruji doing? Where is he living? How is he living? Is something that we have to look into in order to understand this statement. Puja Guruji has been in this satsang mostly all his life. And as an Ekantik Satpurush, as a godsend, thousands and thousands of people have, from the beginning, have always been bowing to him, performing Dunwats, giving him praise and so on and so forth but all that time 30 40 years that people were giving him all this he was always understanding bhagwan and his guruji our puja dada guruji to be the all doers karta nonetheless even after all that praise as of right now for the past one and a half years, our Puja Guruji has been living in a, in a room which was meant for workers, laborers, 
in Loya Dam. And it was vacant for much time. But Puja Guruji has been living in one room, doing bhajan, sleeping on a kotro, meaning it's a, it's a very rough kind of material, which is very thin. And in that time, right now, it is cold. It is getting cold. Without even blankets and just one pillow, doing tap, doing dharna barna for many months, and doing bhajan, keeping moan, keeping silent, not talking to anyone but Bhagwan for a certain amount of time of his, uh, of his day. He is doing this. What does that show? For 30, 40 years, he was accepting praise and all of a sudden for one and a half years, he does not have desires for anything. That shows his greatness. That means that he never had any desires even in the past. But to accept others for their kalyan, he accepted everything. But as of right now, he is completely different from the world, beyond the world. And living in such a situation, living in such a, 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 such a you can say, way that no other person can do so. After accepting after getting so much praise. This is why we have received an extremely great Purush, as Maharaj has mentioned. As for me, now what is happening? What we're doing is, first we have, we are taking the quality of the Akantik Sat Purush. That he is extremely great. Thousands of people are bowing down to him, yet he has no desires for the world. We have looked at the good quality of the Sat Purush. Now Bhagwan, what he's doing is he's having a reflection. Now look into yourself. Our topic for today is Swa Dosh Darshan, looking into oneself. And Bhagwan, what he's doing is first he's saying, look at the good qualities of the Kantik Satpurush. Take the qualities how he is, how he's living, how he's talking, everything. Okay, that's good. You've done that. Now put that to the side. Now, now look at look within yourself. And what is Maharaj saying? As for me, meaning Mada is not talking about himself, he is talking about us. He is talking about us to think in this way. As for me, I am extremely insignificant. Extremely insignificant. Now to think in that way is a challenge at first. No one in this world thinks of oneself as insignificant. Insignificant meaning worthless, meaning complete garbage let's put it that way meaning complete nonsense no value at all insignificant Maharaj is saying think like this I am insignificant meaning we have no kind of existence credit value in this world think in that way and I am solely attached to worldly pleasures if we understand and see ourselves, look inside, we'd be able to see that we like all the panchvishes, sight, smell, taste, listen, feel, touch, everything. We have, if we are given tasty food, we would eat it right away. If we have to do half, of, half a day fast, we'd be thinking about food in our mind constantly. If we listen to something of the world, our, our ears will be pulled right away. Everything. If we see something that we like, our eyes would be pulled there right away. This is what is the meaning of solely attached to worldly pleasures. I do not understand anything at all about God. Now, <clears throat> this is something that is a fact. How Bhagwan is, how great he is, only the Akantik Satpurush can understand. But one still has to realize and think in one's mind that I do not realize anything about God. That is something that is very, very important to do. Shame on me. Feel hurt, feel remorse. Shame on me. It is my fault. Look inside oneself and say this. Think in one's mind. Shame on me. In this way, he feels remorse and imbibes the virtues of the great Purush. 
one feels remorse on one side and on the other side one takes the virtues that I have received a very very great Ekandik Satpurush who in this in this world at the age of 64 does bhajan dharna parna keep silence does not accept any kind of praise after accepting so much praise all of a sudden just like a switch and still is able to live peacefully is able to live very very happily who is able to the ekantik satpurush i have received he is able to take such kind of virtues he also feels remorse after realizing his own flaws. He feels hurt that I don't know anything about God. This Purush has no desires for the world and I have all the desires for the world. He feels very hurt. He feels, how can I, how can I do, what, what can I do, what can I do? He feels very hurt. While repenting in this way, Reming, when, rem, repenting meaning it's a process feeling remorse in this way meaning it's a process not only once but it takes time and one has to do it through one's heart vairagya arises in his heart vairagya meaning non-attachment arises in his heart and thereafter he acquires virtues similar to those of of the satpurush that's how one receives the the qualities of the Satpurush. When one looks inside of oneself and looks at one's faults, and when one sees the virtues of the Ekandik Satpurush. That is the way one receives the qualities of the Satpurush. Swadosh Darshan is not easy. It is actually a very, very difficult task to do. That's why Maharaj has mentioned that if one acquires, or if one does this, then one would acquire the virtues of the Satpurush. And if one acquires the virtues of the Satpurush, one would also become like the Satpurush. One would also become great like the Satpurush. But it's very difficult to do. But may it be this life, or the life after, or five lives, or a hundred lives, or five thousand lives, one will have to take this path and one will have to look inside and introspect in order to attain bliss, in order to find oneself, in order to find one's faults, in order to remove one's faults, and in order to imbibe the Satpurusha's virtues. One will have to do this. Without this, it is not possible. But we are very, very lucky as Loyadam Parivar Haribhakta to have received such an Ikantik Satpurush who has who is doing so much for us, who is doing bhajan and tap for us, so we would be able to understand this process fast as possible. We are so fortunate that we have received Thakurji Maharaj, a Bhagwan who is pragat, who is always pragat, who is always be pragat, manifest, who is always looking after us and is always with us. He is always with us, the Akandik Satpurush, Anadi Mukto, Muktanan Swami, the mother of Satsang in our Adi Guru Dev. He is always with us. Then why not keep faith? Why not keep strength in them and keep moving forward in our path of spirituality? Why not look inside? Don't be afraid. Sometimes what happens is that we become afraid of looking inside because if we look inside and we see a very very hideous figure then we are not able to you can say withstand ourselves we're not able to accept it it's very very difficult but Maharaj says do not be afraid look at the virtues of the Ankantik Satpurush look at me I will help you out Maharaj says in Satguru Gunatitan Gunatitan Swami Vato that that even do downwards to a blade of grass and I will stay within the blade of grass and protect you. If Bhagwan is inside of a blade of grass, then where is he not? Where is he not? He's always watching after us. He will always watch after us. No matter how we behave, no matter what we do, 
but he will always be there because we have taken his refuge. The Akantik Satpurush. We have taken his refuge. So no matter what happens, he will always be there for us. Our job is to make an effort. Their job is to remove our faults. Removing faults by one's own hands is not possible because the creator of those faults is Maharaj. But it is definitely in our hands to try, to make an effort, to show, the, to show Maharaj and the Akandik Satpurush that I want to become pure and everything else they'll take care of. Put it in their hands. It's the best way to attain Bhagwan's Rajipo and the Ekantik Satpurusha's Rajipo and to attain Bhagwan's Akshardham. Take refuge onto them. Everything else they will do. So this is Ganada 1st chapter 67 which pretty much summarizes Swadosh Darshan. Now we would like to move on to the next Vachnamut, Loya 1st. In this Vachnamut, Maharaj says, Swami Narayan Hare, I have committed a grave sin by perceiving flaws in a Brahmsuru Bhakta of God. Brahmsuru Bhakta of God is no other than the Ekantik Satpurush, who is Brahmrup, who is beyond the three guns, Rajagun, Tamagun, and Satogun, and who is beyond the three bodies, Stur, Shukshma, and Karan. And he is Brahmsuru, meaning he is with Bhagwan. He is, he is in the form of Akshar, such kind of an Ekantik Sadpurush. Now, this is taking this uh, paragraph is taken from the middle, so you won't understand this right away. But as we read, we will pick up the whole message. I have committed a grave sin by perceiving flaws in a Brahmsuru Bhakta of God. This is kind of like a thought that one is saying to oneself, as you can tell. From such thoughts, he, f he would feel intense regret in his heart. Now, this is only if one has taken or one sees flaws in such a Satpurush, that one should feel that it is a grave sin. If not, if one has not seen flaws in such an Ekantik Satpurush or great Sadhu, but if one sees flaws in Santos and Bhaktos, that is still a grave sin, but this is a graver sin. The higher the Purush, the higher the Sat Purush, the, the Ekantik Purush, the more damage it can do to us if we do not be careful and if we do not take the virtues of such a Sat Purush. From, from such thoughts, he would feel intense regret in his heart. He would feel regret in his heart. He would feel remorse that I have taken the flaws of such a, such a Satpurush. As a result of such regret, while eating, he would not he would be unable to distinguish between tasty and tasteless foods. And at night he would not be able to sleep. Now this is for a person who actually has a heart which is soft. This is actually a person who has some kind of alertness and has some kind of sense of Swadosh Darshan. Because after taking some kind of flaw, he feels hurt. Meaning he does not want to take the flaw, but due to some Tamogun, due to some Rajogun, he took the fault of Inikandik Satpurush. He does not want to, it is not his nature. It is not something that is inside of his mind that he wants to do, but due to his swabhav, it happened. Now, how does that person feel after taking such kind of flaw? Number one, remorse. Number two, he cannot tell the difference between tasty or tasteless foods. He feels <coughs> very, very disturbed inside. Maharaj is showing in short that that person feels very, very disturbed. Nonetheless, he would be unable to sleep. Now think about it. In the world, people are unable to sleep due to, you can say, financial calamities, due to some social affairs, 
due to uh, some kind of uh, I can say you can you can say academic issues such kind of circumstances makes one um, feel very very um, you can say disturbed and due to that one cannot sleep but this is not the virtue of or this is not the characteristic of a devotee of God. A devotee of God cannot sleep because he has taken a flaw of the Ekantik Sat Purush. He feels hurt. He feels very, very disturbed inside. That's because that Bhakta has a heart. That Bhakta is soft-natured. That Bhakta wants to redeem himself. That's why. As long as the aversion towards the sun is not removed from the person's heart, he would experience extreme remorse just like a fish would suffer without water. Meaning, that aversion, that thought process, it is not removed from the person's heart. He would feel extreme remorse. He would feel disturbed until it is not removed. And just like how if one takes a fish out of water, just how it flaps, it is very, very, it's breathing for its life, it's gasping, it's about to die, but once you put it into water, it's back to its normal state. Just like how a human can only live in an oxygen environment, but if, it, if a human was put on Mars without any kind of, you can say, space suit or anything like that, then due to the other gases on Mars, a human would die in 30, to 30 seconds to one minute due to the lack of, you can say, oxygen. In the same way, if you put fish in ghee, or you can say clarified butter, if you put fish in the purest of the purest, you can say milk or juice, it would not be able to survive. The fish only survives in water. In the same way, a person who has done this due to one's tamagun or rajagun would not be able to survive in one's heart or would not be able to feel comfort in one's heart until that aversion for the saint has gone away. On the other hand, when he intensely perceives virtues in the sun, then if that sun has been hurt in any way, he would please him with absolute humility. So the, the best way to remove that pain is to become humble for, towards that son. If this type of thought remains in a person's heart, then even if he has perceived flaws in the son, they would still be overcome and he would not fall from satsang. Apart from that, there is not other there is no other remedy that is that is the only remedy so the the only remedy is to become dasna das to become extremely humble towards that sant that one has uh, took the flaw of and to become extremely humble to fold one's hands to bow down to him to do what he says to do, do what he says with one's heart not artificially such kind of you can say you can say behavior pleases the sant and one is not able to, uh, one would not be able to fall from satsang and Marat says at the end there is no other remedy this is the only remedy go to the sant and become humble that is the only remedy there is no other remedy so Maharaj shows us many, many different ways how to do Swadosh Darshan, how to become humble, how to perceive one's flaws and to see virtues of the sun. And that is what we want to do. So this is the Vachnamra Loya first. Let's move on to the next Vachnamra, Kandida, middle 44. Swami Narayan Hare. <coughs> If, on, on, if one previously has kept the company of the great Purush or has had the darshan of God, then one will only perceive one's own flaws 
but will never perceive flaws in any other devotee of God. A person with such circumstances should be known to be godly. Thus, one who is a staunch devotee of God perceives only his own, own flaws, but never does he notice the flaws of other devotees. A firm devotee, a staunch devotee's characteristic is this. In the very essence of Bhagwan's talks is this, is that look at one's flaws and look at others' virtues. It's simple to say, it's easy to say, it's easy to listen to, but it's very extremely hard to do. Because for many lives in the past, we have done so much other, you can say, activity. We have behaved in so much other ways that are not appropriate for a devotee that that kind of mindset has been developed and is staying in our mind, is, is, is etched into our mind. But only when one realizes this, that I have to look at my own flaws and I have to look at others' virtues, then one only would be able to understand this fact and walk on the path of God easily. Without that, it is very difficult to do. <clears throat> and Bhagwan has showed us this way, which is very, very easy uh, to listen to, as I said, very, very easy to read, but very difficult to practice. But, as I mentioned before, take the bard, take the strength of Thakurji Maharaj, Muktanand Swami, all our Sadguru Santo, and our Puja Guruji, and take their strength and move forward in one's life. Do not use one's strength. One does not have any, have any strength. Even if one thinks one does, in reality, it is nothing compared to the strength of Thakurji Maharaj, Muktanand Swami, our Sadguru Santo, and our Puja Guruji. It is nothing. It is like this. It is, is an example. Their strength is like the sun, and our strength is like a light bulb. The light, the energy, <clears throat> the power that the sun produces cannot be compared to a light bulb. But due to the grace of their power, their energy, their strength, that light bulb one day becomes like the sun. That is their grace. That is their daya. So this is the Vachnamur Kadrida Middle 44. Let's move on to our last Vachnamrut, which is Gadda, middle chapter 66. He, dire he directed his first question to Anand Swami. Maharaj said, he said, Suppose there is a person who, despite having little intelligence, recognizes his own faults and does not look at the faults of other devotees. Instead, he looks at only their virtues. On the other hand, Suppose there is another person who is very intelligent, yet he does not see his own faults. Moreover, he overlooks the virtues of other devotees and looks only at their faults. Why is it that the person with little intelligence finds faults in himself, whereas the person with much intelligence cannot realize his own faults? That is the question. Now, the question is easy. One has a lot of intelligence, the other person has little intelligence. The person who has a lot of intelligence, <clears throat> as Maharaj mentions, does not see his own faults. He overlooks the virtues of other devotees and looks at, his, looks at their faults. On the other hand, a person who has little intelligence, he realizes, he recognizes his faults and sees the virtues of others. Now, the question is, why is it that the person with little intelligence finds faults in himself, whereas the person with such intelligence cannot realize his own faults? What is the reason for this? This is the question. Anand Swami answered as he thought correct, but was unable to give a satisfactory reply. So Sri Ji Maharaj explained. The answer to this is, that, is, is as follows. It is because that person has offended some great devotee of God either in this life or in a past life 
as a result of this sin, his intellect, intellect has been corrupted. That is why he perceives flaws or faults in devotees without being able to real, realize faults in himself. This is the only uh, this is the only answer to that question. Meaning, in the past or even in this life, one has hurt. One has taken the fault of an extremely great person. Extremely great person or a great devotee of God is the Akantik Satpurush, without a doubt. Now, due to that, one's intellect is corrupted. Corrupted meaning one's mind keeps seeing faults of others and negative negativity of others and one cannot see the positivity of others and one keeps seeing positivity of oneself and not the negativity of oneself. That is the issue. So that is why Maharaj has said, always look at your faults and always look at others' qualities. That is the way of climbing in satsang. That ends the Vachnam section. We'd like to go to the Kalyankanika section. Arpuja Guruji Nivato. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare. Puja Guruji has said, as long as our fault is not seen, that fault does not go away. And when fault is recognized, that fault will be removed. Very easy, simple, and very, very efficient. <clears throat> Puja Guruji's vato are kind of like the summary of the Vachnamut, but in a diluted way, so that we can understand it very easily. As long as our fault is not seen, that fault does not go away. When one keeps thinking to oneself that I am okay, I am, I am great, I am okay, there is no problem with me, never will that fault be removed. But when one recognizes such faults that I have this, I have this, I have this, this is my fault, this is my fault, this is my fault. Then only will it be removed. There is no other way. So this is the way of introspection that Maharaj has given or that Puja Guruji has given to us through the Adar or the support of the Vachnamrut and Sadguru Swami Nivato. Moving on to the Charitra section. The Charitra section is of Arjun Bapa and of his vasna. Now Arjun Bapa was a, a great great devotee and was a disciple of Sadhguru Sri Gunati Tanan Swami. Now Maharaj, at the end of Arjun Bapa's life, Maharaj told him that I will come uh, and take you to Dham very very soon. Now what happened was that <clears throat> Arjun Bapa, uh, when Maharaj came uh, with his viman, his chariot, Arjun Bapa sat in the chariot and left his mortal body. Now while Maharaj was taking Arjun Bapa to Akshradham, on his way there, Maharaj flew over Arjun Bapa's daughter's farm. The farm was very deserted, deserted and it was not properly maintained. So Arjun Bapa saw this, meaning the soul of Arjun Bapa, put it that way, saw this and said, what will my daughter do? How will she maintain for herself? How will she maintain for her, 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 her husband, her family, everything? What will happen? So due to that, Maharaj says that it kind of smells in this viman, this chariot. Maharaj would smell. Muktanan Swami was right next to Maharaj also. Muktan Swami said, Yeah, Maharaj, I smell that too. What is that? Maharaj says that it smells like vasna. <laughs> vasna meaning desires. Now, Arjun Bapa, while Maharaj was flying the viman, the chariot, it was just a test. Maharaj was just flying. Maharaj had no reason to fly over the farm of Arjun Bapa's daughter, but Maharaj wanted Arjun Bapa to recognize the vasna he had. So he flew over and right there and then 
Arjun Bapa fell in Maharaj's trap. One thing about Sriji Maharaj is that he only takes pure devotees to his Akshardham without any vasna desires. The one thing we have to do as bhaktos is to remove the vasna or desires that we have before we die. Not today and today, but before we die of everything. Only when that happens, one will be able to go to Akshardham. But if one has even the slightest vasna, this is what will happen. So then what happened was that <clears throat> Muktan Samit said it smells, Maharaj said it smells, and due to that, Arjun Baba was put back in his body. Meaning the soul was put back into his body. People were very surprised to see it, to hear even Arjun Baba is alive. They all thought that he said that I will be going to Akshardham soon. Maharaj had even told him. But at that time, even in a short period of time, he came back. So people were surprised that how can this be possible? How could Arjun Bapa come back to his body? Now, Arjun Bapa was deeply saddened by the Vasna in his inner soul he had. He started to think, now only if there is a grace of a powerful saint, this smell of mine will go away. He knew that he had to take the asaro, the refuge of the Ekantik Satpurush. Without the Ekantik Satpurush, he knew that he would not be able to remove this Vasna. At that time, Balmukund Swami was staying in near a, a village there. It occurred to Arjun Bapa that Balmukundas Swami is a gracious and powerful son of Gunatitanan Swami. If I can associate with him, Swami will definitely remove my vasana. Thinking this, thinking thus, Arjun Bapa was ready to meet with Swami. He prepared some sweets <clears throat> using milk instead of wa water. He also prepared other ingredients for thar and he called Swami to. Uh, to uh, the village he was staying. Now, Arjun Baba was surprised and stopped while he was there. It occurred to him that Swami already knows about the Vasna. He knew, Swami knew about the Vasna and said, I have come here to remove your Vasna. So he was surprised. He said, yes, Swami, I want my Vasna removed. Swami laughed and said, all right, come on. Now you don't have, now you don't have any Vasna. Many people were sitting in the Sabha with Swami, but none of them could understand that. All of a sudden, Swami said, now you don't have any Vasna. That's it, right there and then. Arjun Bapa started associating with Swami and stayed for two months. Swami narrated the story and brought the knowledge of Prakriti and the nature of that solution to Arjun Bapa, meaning Sainkh, that everything is going to be destroyed one day. As a result, Swami saw that all the Vasna disappeared from Bapa's inner soul. Then Swami said, Why Bapa? Are you ready to go to Dham? Arjun Bapa said, Yes, Swami. And with that, little time went by, and <clears throat> Maharaj came again with his chariot and took Arjun Bapa all the way to his Akshar Dham. But when did this happen? When Arjun Bapa saw his own faults that I have a vasna for my daughter, her farm, everything, whatever. That's when that happened. That's when Swami's grace was bestowed. When one, when Arjun Bapa saw his own faults, in the same way when we see our own faults and we, when we see the virtues of the Satpurush, then the Satpurush's grace will be bestowed upon us. There is no other way that can happen. This is the only way that it can happen. So this is the story of, of Arjun Bap and how his Vasna was removed. For Charitra 2, it's a Bhaktaraj Virabhai of Upleka, a very, very keen devotee of Maharaj who also had such kind of similar circumstance. But at the end, everything was fixed and everything was good. And due to Maharaj's grace, he also attained the divine abode of Akshardham. So this is course week 8, Swadosh Darshan, which is very, very important for our life. And as Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, 
we should always think in this way where how can maharaj how could thakur ji maharaj how could muktanand swami how could our sadguru santo how could puja guru ji how could santo and bhakto be pleased with my behavior is number 1 looking at one's faults and looking at others virtues this is the best way to climb in satsang this is the best way to attain greatness in satsang without this it's very difficult to do so so let us pray to thakur ji maharaj muktanand swami our puja guru ji that we also attain this virtue in our life so that we can also please them and attain greatness in satsang saying this my humble jai swaminarayan